will come to the first CTA Symposium 2022 Berlin, and this talk is about web scamming and how we apply first CTI curriculum in the investigation. So let me introduce about uh, ourselves a bit. We are coming from LASER, stand for LAC, Advanced Corporate Emergency Readiness Teams. We are becoming the member of the FIRST from April 7, 2003. Our protected networks and constituents can be described in this page uh, in the left side, which you can see this numbering. And uh, we contain of the, the three parts here, as Paul explained before. One part is linked to another, which is a uh, cyber emergency center is mostly handling about the cyber incidents and uh, threat handlings. And we'll link to the uh, cyber threat intelligence and R&D provided by the cyber grid and uh, monitoring, which uh, have uh, been uh, provided by the our JSOC teams. So about this talk, it is the talk of the TLP White, and it contains for the two parts. The first part is about the threat information itself which is, uh, will be presented by uh, Mr. Kogan and my college. And uh, I will do the presentations about the cyber threat intelligence implementation of the case. I'm Hendrik Adrian. I'm doing this introductions, talk directions, and the CTI details later on. I will hand the microphone to Mr. Kogan to begin to talk about the web skimming uh, threat information. My name is Takehiko Kogan. I am an analyst who analyzes cyberspace that at Black Cyber Emergency Center. As for web skimming, it all started with the detection of JavaScript in one of endpoint product. Recently, web skimming has also been used as an attack that doesn't use banking malware. In general concept, the definition web skimming is as per stated in Wikipedia. Web skimming related threats are coming from phishing or others as per show in the below details. This case of web skimming, we describe a specific crime method to steal users or credit card data entered by the site user by utilizing an embedded malicious code, a compromised vulnerable issue website, and inject malicious JavaScript. The user's credit card information would be sent to the attacker. The web skimming method spotted in our case is by the usage of code execution through the browser. There are two types of cases on how adversaries deliver the malicious content to compromise site. In the first case A, the malicious code was delivered from a malicious server prepared by adversary. In case B, it was delivered from a compromised legitimate site. There are adversaries who specialized in aiming issue site and seek their target using the web scrapping tools. What has motivated them are e-commerce site is growing. Most of them has history of critical exploit. All e-commerce sites are online all the time. All of the sites have users with payment data. Most e-commerce package using third-party tools like jQuery. And users mostly trust the brand more than security. Most of each site are providing multiple payment methods that make the user data post it uh, different. In the following table, it is explained major payment method in most each site with the risk factors. All of those data are the liability in our case. All e-commerce platform, free or commercial, 
uh, vulnerability. For example, e-commerce is an open source e-commerce plugin for the world's most used CMS, WordPress. This is EasyCube vulnerability. EasyCube is also open source. This is SaaS Cloud vulnerabilities. This is Oracle Commerce Platform vulnerabilities. Attackers steal users' credit card information without knowledge of users and EC site operators. This malicious JavaScript is an attempt by the attacker to send the stolen information in case A. The marked URL is the upload destination, which is the attacker platform. Here it is for case B. The yellow mark is the upload destination of the stolen information. But we have confirmed the information was uploaded to legitimate site. We'll talk more about this malicious JavaScript later. From the data, we monitor and OSINT information. We were able to confirm information on some tempered EC site. Between February 24, 2020 and April 20, after one year, the credit card information entered by around 8,000 customers on the site was compromised. The targeted credit card information is around 9,000 cases. It repository contains credit card names, numbers, expiration date, and security codes. We confirmed that an authorized JavaScript was downloaded from the attacker's servers after forensics the communication of e-commerce site. Through OSINT research using URL scan, we found several damaged EC site some of the investigated compromised EC site are listed in the slide. This is how we identify the case by using the following method to detect compromised EC site. Now we were talking about targeted e-commerce site and malicious file detection. The JavaScript contains string related to the targeted EC site. The root where stolen data has been sent was confirmed coming from targeted victim e-commerce site. Each path has been provided for each victim. The targeted e-commerce site categories were fashion. Because fashion sites are popular, there were also gift and food and no specific categories was targeted also. About threat investigation. jQuery is useful library to help site programmers simplify their codes. Google hosted very useful library like jQuery for the web programmers to use in their API. The attacker loaded malicious JavaScript faking as Google API and jQuery. When we investigated the Tempest site, it was confirmed that a vulnerability in EasyCube may have been exploited because an EasyCube error screen was displayed. The victim organization have also confirmed that their test account have been exploited to modify to load much JavaScript. Attackers compromise e-commerce site to execute malicious JavaScript in users' browsers. You can see that the JavaScript is being loaded from a site that mimic Google. However, Google VAPI was a site that had nothing to do with Google. As a result of decoding JavaScript running from an attacker's malicious site, we have confirmed that information such as credit card numbers, security code, expiration date, etc., 
are sent to attacker's site. Again, you can see that the stolen information was uploaded to Google V API. Since late October 2021, Google VAPI.com and jQueryAPIStatic.com has been used by attackers. Using name servers managed by name.com, it is separate from Google. We hope that name.com can block such domain requests in the future. About malicious JavaScript. Attackers use Packer to obfuscate malicious JavaScript. This is the malicious code decoded in the first step. Here is some of the malicious code that was decrypted in the second step. You can see that the credit card information is sent to Google V APIs, which imitate Google. The URL of the information upload destination was changed for each e-commerce site or payment service that was tempered with. Each target contains a parameter name and a string that identifies the victim organizations and targeted e-commerce sites are carefully researched by attacker rather than targeted to the general public. How the fake jQuery works. Stealing card information using malicious JavaScript that sends them into the adversary's infrastructure. Stealing member information that temporarily stored in auth login cookies by monitoring the login screen or member registration screen. Sending card folder information with malicious cookies coded to malicious code to the adversary's infrastructure. These are the functions that support the malicious purpose happened. These functions naming are specifically used by attackers in their compromise site. We can identify the attacker's ID by following these naming strings. You can see the card information saved in the variables to be sent after meeting several conditions. About threat activity monitoring. The fraudulent domain used by the attackers were acquired on July 28, 2020 and November 7, 2021. We can see the connection between bad domains. Similar attacks have been reported also by TrendMicro and JPSASCC. However, their report did not record the domain names we investigated. We have confirmed that five files have been updated since November 2021. We have also confirmed that files last updated before November have the same hash value as on Google V APIs. Therefore, we think that Google V APIs and jQuery static are likely to be used by the same actor. If you compare the file before and after the update, you can see that the communication destination of the post destination has changed. However, the path has not changed. You can see that the updated file has better obfuscation. About threat report. After we reported the results of our investigation to Japan Cyber Crime Control Center, we jointly published the report. JP SASCC was also reported the same attack. According to several facts in the investigations, we believe that the adversary has bigger operation scope. We have provided all necessary threat intelligence information to the law enforcement to support their further actions. Number one, identifying malicious script as court that steal credit card information. Number two, identifying attacker's server and share it with monitoring team. Number three, 
identifying the face site and send alert to monitoring team. Number four, providing information to Japan Cyber Crime Control Center and investigating an issue site that has been tempered. Number five, sharing information to financial institutions such as directory information for stolen credit card information. About threat research. These are domains we collected during our investigation linked to this case. The first two domains are the bad domains in our report and others are using similar component to our case under different target and timeline. During the research of the threat source, there is a possibility that the adversaries may be linked to the similar cyber threat group called Water Pomola. Based on our OSINT, the threat is currently in ongoing status. World Threat Summary so far. In this page, we have summarized the contents of this case in one page, just in case you want to share it to your protected networks or customers. We have applied following countermeasure actions. Number one, coordination to the abused infrastructures. Number two, coordination via third C third channels. Number three, coordination with law enforcement via Japan Cyber Crime Control Center. Number four, threat research sharing within trusted communities. Threat information sharing in the first.org. We are going to the cyber threat intelligence implementation of as the part two of these presentations. We are conducting the investigation based on the first CTI-6 CTI curriculum methodology. The marked parts are the methods that we have implemented to investigate this case. So if you don't know the uh, locations of the CTI curriculums, um, it is uh, located in the first website. The first implementation to take out is in this case is how we use the intelligence uh, cycle called FIAT to handle the current case. Fiat cycle can be seen in the first CTI curriculum in the method and methodology chapter. The components that has been implemented are to find, we have included this in the damage assessment. We are using OSIN to find all of the damage size and so on. And fixes include in the investigations, monitoring and the code uh, comparisons, exploit is the method we are using to gather the evidence and analysis obviously for the code analysis and the threat research and to disseminate for the reportings and awareness purpose. The second takeout that we can share is about the threat model of the e-commerce business. We won't be able to investigate the case very well if we don't know their threat model. First is so we have to define and assess the, the CTI threat model components of the current uh, e-commerce sites and try to enumerate them for the either the liabilities including the vulnerabilities exploits and other attack vectors and we have to also to construct enumerations for the threat risk and risk bar calculations and then based on the those calculations we can recommend several actions to prevent it then we have to do the first step again to assess and sharpen the current developed model to be more and more effective in the next period. And in this example, we are using the strike model for the reported case. There are several models we managed to build and in this presentation, we are sharing the strike model because it is the easiest to understand. The CTI threat model of the e-commerce sites can be defined into several components. The first component is the assets. To understand the assets of the easy sites uh, is located as a service in online servers itself or as the data interacted to it. E-commerce uh, system itself contains of the tangible and intangible assets. So uh, tangible assets like a physical ones, equipment, servers, the devices and so on 
and the intangible assets like software trademarks license and important one is the users data that get in and out through it the intangible assets the important one here and it is having the components contains of the PII payment credentials several online authentications and another uh, sensitive data that can be varied depend on the each uh, e-commerce system itself to understand about those assets we have to know what kind of the data that are actually exchanged in the e-commerce system the simplest case is shown in this graph we have the user here the e-commerce systems and administrators and uh, these are another system which are interactive to the uh, our uh, e-commerce e system itself and these are the components or or data that are being exchanged that is actually important scope in the assets to be understood in order to understand about the liability so after understanding the assets we can understand about the attack surface and attack vectors that might be used by attackers to uh, aim our systems so it can be uh, divided practically to the two uh, components here which is a uh, the server side itself or the client side the server side attack surface like uh, known vulnerabilities the zero days the vulnerability for the administration panels which is not actually not including in the own system of the e-commerce itself and then there is a weak or insecure or a leak or login credentials that also can be uh, defined as the component of the server side liabilities and then the for the attack surface or factors in the client sites is uh, undetected assets stealing actions from the server sites like a uh, through the malicious strip targeting the user's browsers and there is also a liability of the trusted reputation can be used to hide extra traffic that uh, has been extracted or exfiltrated from the uh, browser site we have also have to define the threat agent to understand what behavior like initiations masses and so on that to predict the attack factors and surface can be defined into two groups which is uh, the first group is the stealer actors themselves which is uh, actually uh, grabbing the uh, PII and the online payment credentials as per described in this case and there is also actors who pound the EC sites to illegally uh, sell them to the stealer actors the next step is the providing control we have to think on how to prevent the agent to do their offensive actions as per stated uh, in this uh, illustration so uh, when attack initiations and we understand about the attack factor of it and we know exactly about what kind of the agent what kind of needs and behavior for that and we also understand about the what part of the assets that we have to protect we have to uh, gain a certain control to provide these protections the next step is the study and research of our damage possibility the possible damage of a successful attack can be enumerated into several percentage as per shown in the red color below so after understanding the assets attack surface and factors and then the threat agents and control and also understanding about the damage we have to enumerate our liabilities further into in the form of the risk and the risk bar in order to understand about the enumeration of the threat itself we have to seek further to the vulnerabilities details and then the exploitation skill levels and their attack factors this information can be seen in the cv and the cvss of the any kind of the published uh, vulnerabilities now we are going to the calculations so we go to the formulations to enumerate the threat likelihood and the risk bar each defined threat in the e-commerce can be enumerated actually using a formula similar to this one so the explanation is uh, the threat factor is the average of the score in the exploits or vulnerability plus the accessibility or skill level and adding it to the damage where the likelihood of a threat or exploits that can hit you can be defined by the using the uh, this uh, formula below so it is a 
actually based on the reward, effort, audience, and skills. It's uh, sorted as a RES or RES, and the reward is coming from the threat factor here. Effort, audience, and skill can be seen in the CPSS, and then the, you can divide this value into the factor that can contradict the RES itself. We can examine the risk bar with the simple likelihood times to the reference damage in the past. Let me give you one simple example about the, how to count this uh, risk bar. For example, in this CV, it's having the reward factor 7.5, which is uh, taken from the score of the CV itself, and then the, having the factor 10 and 10 for the uh, accessibility and the damage. So the likelihood is uh, the reward which is uh, this number times to 5, 7, and 2 by the factors that uh, contradict the RIAS that is uh, different in your business uh, but in this case I'm using the value of the 100 so if the past RCE damage is around uh, 10,000 US dollar then the maximum uh, risk of the this uh, CV is uh, like uh, 60,000 something, which is uh, around six times of the uh, previous uh, damage happens. The important part of any threat model is the action part. The actions are generally defined by hardening the system and security management or uh, improvement of the IR program and CTR program. Factors to consider for taking actions are to set acceptable risk bar value, depends on the budget, and to perform actions based on it, and then to prioritize the vulnerability handling, to adjust the budget to achieve the acceptable risk bar, to practice and improve the appropriate CTI models and to support IR to be prepared for the left to boom events, to exercise the policy regularly by testing them, for example, and periodically review every policy supporting to hardening IR and CTI. The third takeout is the source information reliability implementations. In the first, CTI curriculum is clearly stated that the ratings for the CTI source and information reliability as per stated below. So we have ratings for the source reliability here and also information reliability rating too. We are using the reliable and usually reliable sources as the source of the information and the confirm reliability only for the evidence collective. The fourth takeout is the data processing. So we are using the tick test version two, actually for the data processing method in this thread research part. This information can be used to compare the different fields of data and to evaluate whether they have relationship. The details can be seen in the previously uh, mentioned slides. For the implementation point itself are first evaluate whether a feed has a relationship to a uh, environment that is being monitored for this case and then assess how much detection we get out of, out of the prepared data or including the data we collected and then measure the impact that a certain feed has by calculating the number of true positives on its accuracy by uh, applying the data processing and then the having the our source and information uh, trusted level we created this uh, threat indicators or iocs uh, it has been reports that the adversaries are still active in exploiting uh, e-commerce sites afterwards so we hope that the ioc can be helpful to trace them further so that is the explanation of the cyber threat intelligent aspects of this case and the takeaways that you can get. We have provided the uh, Slack invite URL which you can access by uh, clicking this uh, link and then the, you will come to the our uh, Slack channel where you can ask the questions within 10 days after the conference. So thank you very much for listening to our presentations and thank you for the first conference for having us in the CTI Symposium 2022 and uh, hope these uh, materials can be helpful for the security community.